One man is locked up in a mysterious dark place. He is Jeremy Rains. When he regains consciousness he finds himself locked up in the glass box and timer was running in front of him. At the moment the timer turns to zero and the radio transceiver is connected to another man's. Please help me, is anybody out there? Somebody, anybody? Please, somebody, anybody, please. Hello, can you hear me? Henry, Henry Shaw. Who the hell is this? Okay, Henry. Henry, like Jeremy, was kidnapped by someone and opened his eyes to find he was in a glass box. 222, 221, 220. You gotta get me out of here! So the two guys think they're involved in someone's set up crime and they start to exchange their information. You know a man named Dietrich Morgan? No, 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 no. I don't know anyone by that name. I'm positive. The timer resets when it turns zero, and only kidnappers know what's to happen when it turns zero again. Okay. I'm gonna figure this out. The count is over, and immediately the van starts and moves. And Jeremy finds out that the van carries Henry is also moving to some destination. Yeah, in the trunk of a car? Because I am. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I'm in a car too. Henry is a member of U.S. Department of State, so he has to keep his identity a secret, but he reveals who he is to get a grasp of a situation. Okay, listen, I work for the State Department. Slow it down, asshole! And actually, Jeremy also is a U.S. Secret Service special agent. So the kidnappers induce them to exchange information to extract information from them. Hold on. While the two are talking, a note is sent to Jeremy through the only one hole in the glass box. The note says, give the location of roulette. Jeremy, no, Jeremy, please. If it will get us out of here, I need you to tell them, please. I have... <laughs> Jeremy, you have to believe... <clears throat> But Jeremy is well aware of the fact that if the kidnappers know the information that is related to the security of the nation many people will be in danger, so he doesn't do what they want and thinks about ways to escape. Hello, hello, can anybody hear me? Hey, you okay there? Who am I talking to? This is gonna sound nuts, alright? Somebody locked me in the trunk of a car. After a while Jeremy operates the radio and succeeds to contact someone in a truck driving on the same road. I need you to blast your horn three times. That's it, I need to know how close you are to me. I can hear you, man! The trucker was not so far from the van that carries Jeremy and he tries to go after the van. But the kidnappers notice it soon. Ah. It goes silent and the van stops somewhere and the time turns back to zero again. Jeremy? Is that you? This time he is in contact with his estranged wife Molly. He explains the situation to Molly and asks for help, but Molly doesn't trust him based on his misbehaviors and ignores him. I'm in this fucking box. Jeremy, this is right where we left off. The, the gambling is Morgan. No, this is not Morgan. Come on, babe. There, there's someone at my window. While they're talking, the kidnappers came to her house. Hey, let me out of here. Do we have your attention now? Fuck you. Tell us what we want to know. The roulette is a secret bunker used by the president and the vice president during a national emergency. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Stop, stop, please! Jeremy! In an instant the glass box is full of bees but Jeremy is allergic to bee stings so he goes into a shock soon. When he was not conscious, all the bees in the box are gone. The terrorist pushed him close to death on purpose and cure him. Why give me the shot, huh? Why keep me alive? You will give us the location of roulette. On the other side of the world, Henry locked up in a glass box is also getting torture, and the torture gradually gets worse. He keeps the location of roulette secret while the terrorist keeps holding the two guys, and the van continuously moves somewhere. Stop talking. Best thing you can do is to be quiet. Then Jeremy hears the siren of the police that getting near to him. You hear sirens? Yeah, it sounds like they just passed me. You so much as sneeze, we cut your wife's head off and made it to her parents. Jeremy and Henry heard the siren almost at the same time, so they know their vans are close from each other and running in the same highway. After then right in front of Jeremy, police is regulating van drivers. I'm in here! The moment the police is about to return Jeremy yells for help loudly. The situation turns into a gun shooting battle and the terrorist shoots the police and run away. Ah!
After the turmoil, at last the terrorists didn't get caught they fled. And during the turmoil Jeremy got shot and got wounded. The terrorists also got shot by police officers and were dead. Near the driver's seat bell is ringing and Jeremy thinks this is a chance. So he reaches the phone with his hand. 911, what is your emergency? Hello, listen to me carefully. I'm being held captive in the trunk of a car, I need help. Jeremy calls 911 and through the phone conversation he knows that he was captivated in New York and taken to Baltimore. And he realizes it's actually impossible to ask for rescue in a continuously moving van. <coughs> then a dog barks around the pulled over van and Jeremy looks for the dog's owner just in case. Hello? Anybody hear me? Hey boy. Hey. Hey. Fortunately the gunshot penetrated a hole a while ago. So his voice leaked outside and he succeeded to catch the attention of the car owner. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing in there? Jeremy thinks finally he can get out of the terrible trunk and stop all the things the terrorists planned to do. But the terrorists didn't go far away. All the hopes of Jeremy are gone, and now an innocent citizen loses his life. Timer starts to count 30 minutes again. Still Jeremy is not telling the location of roulette, but the terrorists are planning to lure the president to the bunker, and carry out many terrors at the same time. It's a little after 10 now. His ex-girlfriend Molly is also threatened by them so Jeremy is getting more and more nervous. You've reached Special Agent Dale Carter, you know, service. Not a Where is everybody? After then, when he tried to tell other agents this fact, they were already attacked by terrorists. It's collapsed apparently a portion of the George Washington Memorial Highway, which runs directly along the CIA property line. Through the radio communication he heard the situation, and it was worse than his anticipation. Jeremy continues to contact other agents. Finally he succeeded to contact the an agent. You're not the only one. Seven others. Like, Jeremy, I have to go. We're the last ones in the building. We're evacuating. But seven other agents are also captivated and no one can help Jeremy. The situation doesn't change at all. Jeremy! Molly? Oh my god, I'm in the trunk of a car! He can't help but stay captivated in the trunk and watch the ones he loves dying. Now the only thing he can do is give the location of Roulette. They want information on the president's bunker. I've got the info, they're trying to get it out of me. Oh my god. I'm sorry. Jeremy, help! Help me, something's happening! While he is debating himself whether to tell them or not, the time is running out and he sees he doesn't have much time left until the next torture. Simultaneously the quiet van starts to drive wild again. And at sudden Jeremy gets connected to a news interview. Hang up the goddamn phone. Can, can you confirm what's taking place? Are you one of them? No! I'm not a terrorist. It's life or death situation for him, but the news desk doesn't care about his life at all. They want to instill fear and pet him, so stop! I must drive the cars before you turn me off! At the moment, the police officers go after the van. <laughs> but as he anticipated, the terrorists could give police the sleep. Just tell us where we're going. do all this, all this effort. And you got nothing. Now they completely got out of the encircling net of the police. They don't have much time left until the president they want gets to the destination. So they offer him the last chance. What's, what's happening? Where are you now? The emergency broadcast system's in effect. I've been calling you, babe. I can't reach you. Are you okay? Jeremy, I, I think I know where I am. I think I'm in an ambulance. He only has four minutes to debate. Molly desperately asks him to do what the terrorists want. But Jeremy is such a patriotic guy so she doesn't change his mind. Jeremy! Molly! Molly! Jeremy, I can't... I can't hear... Molly! Jeremy! One last chance, Jeremy. Give us the fucking location of roulette. I'm not giving you anything. You lay one hand on it, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Jeremy decides to give up his life for the nation. When the last timer reaches zero, unknown liquid is poured into the glass box. The liquid fills and fills up the glass box fast. And when the liquid is filled up to Jeremy's chin, he gets another call from the terrorist. I know, it's a binary explosive, a liquid bomb, and you're dead either way. But I goodbye, Jeremy. He is in the liquid bomb and the bomb is going to fill all the holes in his body and kill him. So Jeremy's destined to become one with bomb and the terrorist will use him.
but when he is waiting for his death, he sees sunlight and someone pulls him out of the bomb. Suddenly unexpected things happen, Jeremy doesn't get a good grasp on the situation. I'm Henry. It's Henry. Put the gun down, okay? Everything's cool, alright? The people around him seem to be police officers and the ones he's familiar with look so calm, in opposite of Jeremy. And even his estranged wife Molly was there watching him. It sure beats the hell out of a polygraph, don't you think? The man in front of Jeremy says all that was a test to see if he can protect the president. All the dead people he's seen and the hostage holding and many terrors are all fake. 911, what is your emergency? My own... I had to uh, channel my inner actress from my high school drama no. days. All the things came back to normal and he sees the roulette which he protected with all cost. Yeah. Well, that was the idea. The Washington Monument, that's it? That's where it is? It's not important. Jeremy thought he protected the nation and Molly, and he can live an ordinary life, but the next moment, at sudden Molly handcuffs him. What the fuck is this? Washington Monument. Hey guys, you still testing me? He thought everything was over, but their plan was more elaborate than he imagined. And Jeremy was killed by Molly's hands. Thank you for watching Movie Goes Movie Recap. Next time, if you want to watch fun and various movie recaps, please subscribe and thumbs up.